Hello, my name's Don, and this is my 1969 Volkswagen Westfalia. I've been working on this bus for six years and uh, getting into short rows now, although you never quite get finished. We're, we're very close to being finished with this. I actually built this bus for my wife, Phyllis. She and I plan to do a lot of camping in it. She's just retired and I'm getting ready to, and we can't wait to go camping in it. Got a text from a friend of mine somewhere around six years ago asking if I knew of someone who wanted this old bus that was out in the field and rusted up, hadn't ran in many years, and uh, he just wanted to find it a good home. So I took on this project and uh, started out I was gonna make a, just a, a drivable weekender. You could go camping and uh, it looked decent. But as I worked on it, I, I, I got a little, uh, I guess I got a little carried away and it took me six years to, to get it all done, but uh, I think it turned out pretty nice for, uh, if you could see the before and after, you probably would agree. Um, it has a 1776 engine. It was built by Hicks VW over in Durham. Chad and Bob Hicks did a nice job on it. It runs great. The transmission, we did we did some, some resealing and, and some work on the transmission. It has a vintage speed shifter, which I really like. Uh, can't say enough about the vintage speed products. The electrical was quite a challenge. I was a little nervous about fires and hate those Volkswagen ceramic fuses. So we put a marine fuse box in it. Uh, it's made by Blue Sea, again made for marine work. A lot of people use them in street rides. Good, good product. Um, rewired everything, built a wiring harness. Uh, good friend of mine, Vicente Diaz from Diaz Automotive over in Pittsburgh. He helped me with the wiring. He's uh, going with modern fuses. We had to add some relays, which in 69 it didn't have any relays. We, uh, we, we worked quite a few hours making the wiring work. We, we, we had challenges with back feed on turn signals and, and all kinds of things. But we're there now, everything on electrical works. It's all new. Uh, don't have to lay in the bed and worry that it's gonna catch on fire. One thing that we did, uh, if, you're, if you're taking on a project like this, one of the first things I would suggest doing is back at the engine compartment where the electrical comes off the, the uh, battery. We put a circuit breaker there. Um, it's good, you can, you can reach in and turn it off if you're, you know, it helps with, with theft and it also um, protects it if something happens along the way and, and you get a short. Whereas Volkswagen, from the battery all the way to the front, from the starter to the ignition switch, there wasn't any protection, as you know. Uh, so now the whole, the whole circuit is protected. We had uh, another friend do the interior, uh, J&G Creations. It's former J&G Creations. John Noel has moved to, to France and opened a new business there and uh, changed the name to Classic Designs by John Noel. And uh, he did an outstanding job on this interior. One, one, of the, one of his employees, Eric Wallace, actually finished up the job after John moved. But John, this was John and, and Phyllis's ideas of colors. And uh, they started it, and Eric did a fantastic job of finishing it for us. We're real happy with both of those people. So the seats were um, another challenge. The, the original seats, of course, they sat down low, and, and they, um, they're a unique set of seats. And, I wanted, I didn't, I didn't like that seat. So we, we built the bases up and, and uh, these seats are actually original to a, a BMW. And they're, they're Shell, the, the brand name is Shell, the, the new company is Shell Man. The, the seats actually have uh, J&G Creations put lumbar, electric lumbar bags in them and they also have uh, electric heaters. That is one project that I haven't finished. The, um, they're all installed in the seat, but I haven't ran the wires up and, and mounted the gauges. I got to build some brackets for that. So it's, it's an ongoing process. So the, the floors are made out of eucalyptus wood and they, it's a very hard wood. And 
friend of mine, Jeremy Lindley, Lindley Builders, he helped put those floors in, and that was a, it was quite a big job. It was rough on his saw, hard hard wood, very hard. Thanks, Jeremy. So there's a few more things that I've got to do through the floors. The uh, this nice vent that we made, and this piece haven't been glued in yet. And as you can tell, when I put the panels on, this is a little bit too wide, so we got to cut it off a little and tweak it. Then we'll glue them in or, or screw them in. This is for the, the seat that goes over on this side. Got it temporarily covered up. I'll probably cut some little wooden blocks for it. This is not mounted yet. Still a work in progress. The floors, if, if you're wondering, the floors are just floating floors. They're not glued down. They're not screwed down. They they're actually have two screws in one side. The rest of them, they're just floating. We thought that might be better. It, it, a little flexibility there. We decided that the dash, as, as you know, the dash and most VWs are, are black, uh, kind of a satin black. We decided to do something different with this one. We, we painted the dash the outside color, the seafoam color, and I uh, think it turned out really nice. Might have to wear sunglasses on a sunny day, but we, we think it turned out real nice. The vinyl part of the dash, the strip that goes in the front there, it was cracked up really bad. It was a terrible shape, three or four large cracks in it. We actually ground those cracks down, made a V in them, and, and filled them with fiberglass and Bondo. And Jean Noel covered those with the same vinyl that we did the seats in the, in the door panel with. Kind of, our, our goal was to tie everything together inside with, with that dash, and I think we accomplished that. The original headliner was Baltic Birch, and it was it was coming apart. The veneer was coming unglued, so we were able to source this Baltic Birch. Standard on plywood, as you know, is 48 inches, and this is 52 inches. So we special ordered this plywood from Fitch Lumber Company over in Carborough, and uh, Phyllis did the finish work on it, and it's very close to the original. I think it turned out nice. The um, Underneath the headliner is, is insulated well. Behind the door panels, there's a lot of insulation. Uh, it, it's a lot quieter than it was when it was original. Of course, we were hoping to stay cooler and warmer in the winter. So those, these windows are called, they're exclusive to campers. You may see them in a sunroom in Florida, but they're called jealousy windows. And they're, of course, old school windows. They, they crank out to open them and, and we had a time rebuilding these. We, we tore them all apart, polished them up, and put them back together with a kit from Wolfsburg West for the gaskets. And funny story, I called Wolfsburg one day to ask a question about the gasket. And I told a guy that I was getting ready to rebuild, or I was in the process of rebuilding the jealousy windows. He said, stop right there. Don't take the glass out. I said, man, it's too late. Glass is laying everywhere. He said, that is a tough job to do. And we found out that it was, but it, we're real happy with the end results. They, they work well. They, um, I guess they work as, as well as they did when they were new. And it was quite a job for Phyllis and myself to rebuild those. Uh, we've, we've learned some tricks along the way. You, you get ready to put the rubber in here, you push it in and it pops out there, and you push it in there and it pops out there. And, it took us several weeks to get those rebuilt, but again, we're real happy with the end result on the jealousy windows. So order the interior lights on the Volkswagen are very, well, I'll just say they, they the new ones are made in China and very cheap. I, I ordered one, took it out of the box, put it back in the box and started looking for interior lights. And my goal was to find something that looked old. And I think the inside of a Volkswagen Westphalia, it reminds me of an old, boat, like a Chris Craft boat, and so I, I started looking in marine catalogs and on the internet with marine products, and this light caught my eye. It's an LED light. It's made in the U.S. Lunatech, Lumatech is the name of the company, and again made in the U.S., and they're LEDs. You hold it down and it dims. You turn it back this way, it, it turns blue. You hold it down and it dims again. Really nice light, well built, expensive, but, but well worth it. They um, 
much, much better than the original Volkswagen and also better than, the, certainly better than the aftermarket Volkswagen Jump. I did something when I was wiring these lights up. The two back ones, you're able to turn them off from the original light switch in the front. That way, if you're camping, you forget to turn it off. When you're driving up, you can, you can flip a switch, turn them both off. So you can leave them on, turn them on and off from up front. If you're, if you're into bed at night, you're ready to go to sleep, you can reach up here and turn them off. The front one is it's controlled by the switch here. Because you can reach it from the driver's seat. So it's always on. It always has power going to it. I thought maybe there's a dining room table that goes here that hasn't been mounted yet. And I thought a little bit of light on that table would be nice. So same brand light as the others up there, Lumatech. Again, marine, these are made for boats. This is a cool switch, I think. You, you touch it and it comes on. You hold it down and it dims. Touch it again and it goes off. Cool light. And if you're wondering about this, it turns on and off when it switch up here so it doesn't run all the time, run your battery dead. So as far as the exterior color, we, we looked and we searched and we had several years to come up with a color because it was so much bodywork involved. And after um, Lamborghini blue and seafoam green from a little French car, a Nissan, uh, it's actually a, a little Japanese Nissan green color. We kept buying this paint and trying these colors and, and one day I was mounting the front headlight assembly and it came the color of the exterior on this bus. And when I was mounting it, Phyllis walked by and said, hey, what color is that? I said, I really don't know. It came, these headlight assemblies came pre-painted this color. She said, that's the color we should paint the bus. So my friend Jeff Maynard took it over to the paint shop in Durham. They took a picture of it, and that's how this color came about. So we don't have a name, we just have numbers for the paint color. The white is actually Chevrolet's white. It's the, it's the white, which is called Olympic white, and it's also called universal white. But anyway, it's the standard white on, on Chevrolet cars. So the bumpers on this, Volkswagen were, were kind of a challenge. They were in bad shape. The, the paint was off from them. They were pitted up bad. The rear bumper was so thin in one spot you could you could hold a flashlight and see through it. And Billy Hubanks worked some magic on it with uh, with his welding abilities. Uh, he, he brazed it with a oxyacetylene welder and we ground it back down. And we had so much time in the bumpers. We had to sandblast them we put epoxy primer on them. We had so much time in them that Billy and I decided that we were gonna do something special with them. So we took the bolts on the inside, whereas normally you got bolts coming through the bumper and they're exposed on the outside. We welded carriage bolts on the inside so that you can't see the bolts. The, um, the front bumper is a three-piece bumper. You got the center and the left and the right side. We decided we didn't like the rubber that goes between in the seams that are in the three-piece. So we made a, the front bumper a one-piece bumper. We, we welded it up solid. We also put the carriage bolts in it. So when you look at the bumper, it's just cleaner looking. The back bumper's got two bolts in it and they hold a splash pan on the side, which is very important. Those splash pans keep the, the gravel from coming up and tearing your bumper up in the back of the car. So we decided two, two bolts showing would, would be worth it to, to get those splash pans reinstalled. I think the exterior was probably the biggest challenge with this bus. It had quite a bit of rust in it when we bought it. It had a, um, the dog legs in the front were rusty. The floorboards were basically stop signs. Uh, you might say it had Fred Flintstone brakes. You could put your feet down and, and stop it and start it. So welded in new floorboards, new dog legs, rocker panels are new. A lot of work, a lot of hours. My mentor with that was Billy, is, is Billy Hubanks. Um, he, he did a lot, of, a lot of coaching and quite a bit of hands-on work with me on the exterior. Once we prepped the exterior, a former student of Billy's, Jeff Maynard, 
who's a, who's a wonderful painter. He, he, he did the spraying of the paint and uh, excellent job. I, I think uh, most everyone would agree. It turned out really slick and nice. We're, we're happy with the paint job. We took the original engine out and, and put a, a built up little 1776 engine in, built by Hicks VW over in Durham. Chad and Bob Hicks are wonderful Volkswagen guys. The engine, it, the engine bay, I think it turned out nice. Still not finished. You can tell that the wires are still, we, we, I've got to tuck the wires. They're all new. There's a few things going on here that I haven't finished yet. But for the most part, it's done and I'm uh, real happy with it. Got a, got a lights, LED lights. It's going to light it up real nice. And, uh, real happy with the way things turned out here. The circuit breakers up here that uh, I mentioned earlier that protects the whole car from the battery to right there. If it gets a short, it'll, uh, it'll trip that circuit breaker as opposed to possibly burning the bus down. We put the, um, whereas most of them have a fuel filter up here, a little plastic cheap fuel filter, the fuel filter is underneath the bus. Uh, my opinion on that is if it gets a leak, it'll leak down on the ground rather than leaking up here on the electrical and possibly causing a fire. So the uh, everything to do with the fuel from the fuel tank to the fuel pump to the fuel filter is all underneath the bus. The only thing we have is a gas line coming up to the carburetors. Seems safer to me. So in case you're wondering about the trailer hitch, uh, this is built by the guy up in Virginia that's on the Samba. He did an excellent job. I wish I had his name, but I don't. Um, the, the hitch is actually for a trailer. There's gonna be a little trailer that we're gonna restore next. It's an old Sears trailer. And uh, more to come on that, but it's gonna it's gonna hold the tent and quite a bit of the camping gear. Looking forward to doing that next. If you like this film, that we, we didn't cover everything in the film. If you have questions, uh, put them at the bottom in comments. I'll be looking back and I'll I'll answer your questions as as, as quickly as possible. We we plan to have more films and and uh, but if you have questions, just ask them at the bottom and we'll uh, we'll answer them. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. All new weather stripping, so things are, you have to slam them because it's, I used a German weather stripping, which is a nice quality, but it takes a while to break it in. The door doesn't close as good as it did, but it will when it gets fucking in.